everybody, welcome back to the New York Stock Exchange. My name is Dave Vellante, and we're here at the Cube Studio along with NYSE Wired. This is our media week in our CXO series. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm really excited to have Rob Skillington here as the Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder of Chronosphere, an observability specialist, otherwise known as Ollie. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Rob, Thanks good to see me. you. Yeah. Appreciate you uh, coming on. Okay, so when did you start the company and why and what was your founding premise? Yeah, great question. So we started the company 2019 uh, and uh, me and my co-founder, uh, Martin Mao, uh, had, were working at uh, Uber. We'd previously worked together at Microsoft and, and Amazon uh, more than uh, on AWS, more than a decade ago. Uh, and we had come to Uber um, to help them build a lot of the infrastructure uh, around the operational excellence and scale out of, uh, of the core systems there. And so uh, we helped build and scale their internal monitoring and observability uh, capabilities. And then we actually rebuilt them in open source uh, to optimize for the scale efficiency of the systems and how chatty they were um, as we move that Uber from on-premise uh, servers and monolithic architecture to microservices and, and containers. This is so, around 2015, as I recall. Yes. Is that about right? Yeah, we started uh, started working on this problem at Uber in 2015. That's started correct. using uh, Google Spanner and all this other cool stuff. We've had uh, we've had the uh, uh, the App Dev team who built that on oh. the Cube before, and so they went through the sort of their model of some of the stuff they were doing on-prem, what they were doing in the cloud. The, Sort of interesting, interesting model for future apps. Yes, is what we felt like. So you sort of learned there, solved some really serious problems mm -hmm. in observability. That's correct. Yeah, we were uh, we basically rebuilt the the entire observability stack after building it a first time um, for true true cost efficient scale. And you know, to put that into perspective, we were spending about. Uh, 10 plus percent of the all the servers that we would buy, 10 percent of those, so one in 10, would go to collecting the data to monitor the other nine out of 10 servers, right? And uh, we, with, our, with all our work on basically rebuilding infrastructure for um, the, the complexity of what like modern day apps really uh, require in a cloud native, uh, in that new dev app world, right? Um, that that was uh, ex extremely expensive, and so we we rebuilt everything again. And we created a new database um, uh, from scratch. You know, after doing a lot of uh, research in the the storage systems um, out there and there, and talking to our scale ups like Facebook and Amazon and teams there that had built it themselves, and we reduced the cost to about three three less than three percent of overall. I'm, I'm kind of laughing. <laughs> the reason is when you think about a typical IT shop. Yeah. You go, man, ten percent, not so bad. Right. But then you go to scale. Yes. And it's like a lot of money. <laughs> and I mean, it's yeah, we're talking about like uh, yeah, more than like 10, 10 million hardware units, you know. And in fact, I, I remember being told by our CTO, uh, okay, this Halloween and uh, New York, sorry, Halloween and New Year's Eve were our two biggest events during the year. He had to buy us uh, like basically nine million dollars of hardware to get through Halloween one year, and he said, "This is the last time we're doing this, boys, <laughs> yeah. boys and girls." Um, and the team was was very uh, adamant about not repeating um, that. So yeah, I mean, it, it it's a huge huge number. The, the interesting thing about this and why it gets our attention so much is because we looked at Uber as an early example of a technology that was purpose built for that app, for that use case. But the technology behind it, we always felt like could be scaled broadly across the industry. And that's exactly what you're doing in the observability space. Okay, so you start the company, T take us back. We're always really interested in how you started the company, how you did the raise, how you funded it, you know, all that good stuff. Share, share that with the audience. Yeah, so uh, it, was, it was an interesting time, 2019, uh, you know, a year before the pandemic. Uh, so we, we first thought we'd build an in-person office uh, and we uh, knew that we would have to build an infrastructure team with a lot of heavyweights. It's hard to develop this, this te technology. At, you know, it's, some of the storage 
systems challenges here, obviously PhD levels challenges, and like the, the team requires a very specific archetype of engineers. So we knew we had to build a like a world class team, and uh, and to do that we would need to raise raise some some funds to do that, right? And uh, me and Martin just got started, kind of uh, seeing how far we get by ourselves, and then we got about maybe 30 days into that, <laughs> and decided, okay, the, the schedule for which we would need to really bring on help and do re some real funding would uh, was a lot faster than, than what we thought. Um, and Greylock were, uh, and, and along with a few other firms, were, were had kind of been following that, uh, you know, uh, different uh, companies leaving Uber, right? Uh, well, sorry, different individuals leaving Uber, looking at to start companies. Because at Uber, we really did build a lot of the infrastructure ourselves um, and uh, that's pretty rare and I think like it was also during the shift as we were just talking about for how applications are developed and um, and, and rolled out uh, at scale uh, robustly right um, like when Twitter was built you know the, the fail whale would show up in and maybe it went out for an hour or two and that was acceptable yeah, but yeah. like that was yeah. no longer the case you know come 2014 2015 um, and, uh, and so people really fundamentally had, had, trying to work out how to do this um, uh, effectively and cost efficiently. And so, uh, yeah, we knew we had to build a team. And um, uh, Jerry Chen at Greylock, uh, who has a VMware background. Yeah, we know uh, Jerry well. Yeah, Jerry's- uh, Docker, VMware, he's- you know, Yes, instrumental yeah. in quite a few uh, yeah. in infrastructure plays, actually. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so Jerry, could see that like we'd you know written the core technology um, and, uh, and and built some related open source projects while we were at Uber, which helped accelerate as well. Of course, you know what we were able to do um, as we already had you know some things that we we were quite familiar with having built them in there first. So okay, so this was an observability challenge that yes. you're out to solve. And uh, what's your focus on observability? I mean, there's some. Some folks we've talked to, you know, very narrow focus, others are more broad. Are you solving the whole enchilada? So basically, we, we started out just solving uh, the cost efficiency problem, which, uh, and, and actually just for a subset of it, uh, pr like just metrics, metrics and monitoring. So there's a lot of real-time alerts that need to happen at these companies. Uh, in fact, uh, Uber has millions of real-time alerts. So within less than 60 seconds, you'll know if something is wrong in 2.5 million particular <laughs> uh, points across the company's infrastructure. And um, that's, that, that requires a lot of data and a lot of real-time access, right? And so that was the problem that we saw exploding at scale um, is, is uh, being able to collect all that data and do that real-time processing at, at that granularity. And, um, and, and it made a difference. Like, you know, we were in 600 cities with, uh, I think, um, you know, nine different products in most cities. And then and then you think about like iPhone, Android, all the different code paths that people could be taking in, th in these different products. It just, that's how you get the 2.5 million points of, of um, uh, detection uh, needed. And so we specifically made that basically solution 10 times cheaper. And in fact, like all of our customers at Connoisseur today achieve more than like 70 to 80% reduction like the minute they're onboarded to Chronosphere. So cheaper than what? Like what's che the baseline? Yeah, so the, well the baseline used to be, uh, again, I think it was really like in the, the low single digit percentage of of their cloud bill or infrastructure spend. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, as, as the complexity and reliability challenges has amped up, uh, yeah, we see a lot of companies spending like 20, 30% of their cloud bill, um, which, you know, these are, these are really big numbers these days, um, especially once you start throwing AI into the mix, which can chew up a lot more compute and resources Yeah, as well. and, and, and at scale, if you don't have a strong observability tool, it's, it's, you got to break, break out the PhDs and lab coats <laughs> yes. and experts to figure it out, and it takes a long, long time. Um, what's your unique IP? How would you describe that, you know, your key mm -hmm. secret sauce? Yeah, our key secret sauce is uh, really basically automatically analyzing how this data flow is flowing in, and then uh, we aggregate and transform that data so that it's at its most efficient resting point once it's stored. Because a lot of that, we are volume priced uh, vendor, and so it's really about the, you know, how many terabytes, petabytes are you collecting of this data? And so if, 
if you transform that on the way in and you, so some of our customers have 98% transformation and aggregation capabilities that they're using with our platform, that's 98% less data you need to store and then, uh, but still give you that fidelity for, you know, hundreds of thousands of alerts or, or whatever you need to keep your business um, healthy and, and real time uh, without, and, and meet those SLA goals that, that in, uh, very high uh, expectations people have for products these days. And, and where do you store the data? Do you, did you build a purpose-built data store for this? Do you, do you stick it in the cloud somewhere? Or yes. So we've built, bucket? we've yeah. built a few different uh, uh, custom databases uh, for this, uh, but the main one that we built at Uber that was, the open, was an open source um, piece of technology that we built there is a time series database and it's mm -hmm. horizontally scalable, runs in commodity hardware. A lot of the old time series um, databases used to be built for financial purposes, uh, yeah. which is you sure. know, relevant here. Stock um, price over time. Yes, yeah. and uh, but a lot of them were really around like using vertically scaled up machines, so like very beefy machines, um, to to try to analyze data uh, as quickly as possible, but not in bulk. And so we were really looking at like how can you run that level of that huge amount of uh, real-time data access across a huge set fleet of servers uh, that are smaller in nature rather than just single beefy machines. So it went from like super strong V8 engine cars to Toyota hybrids that run on, you know, a fleet of Toyota hybrids. Okay, so 2019, you, what month in 2019? Uh, yeah, August was when we... Oh, yes. uh, oh wow. <laughs> so mid to late year yes. and then just uh, right after that, we run it to, all right, we got the bell ringing here. Oh, well, there we are. Love mm -hmm. it, it's starting to go. So right after that, you go into COVID, you were going to be a, a an in-person company. That's right. You ended up being obviously remote, yes. right? <laughs> so, love it. That's, this is my first experience on my live team. TV here. We've got, uh, who is this? This is uh, Guardian. IFF. I think, uh, Guardian yeah. Pharmacy. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, all I didn't right. realize good. I did it multiple love times it. a day. Yeah. That was good. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> love it. We're watching it here on TV. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to you, Rob. Okay, so inside of a year, now COVID hits. Yes. When did you do your first significant raise? Yeah, so Series A uh, with, you know, was a $10 million round with Greylock primarily leading. Uh, that, that was in... Uh, in 2019. Oh, it was, um, okay. So right out of the shoot, because you guys had management shops. Yeah, I wasn't, were, I wasn't kidding when I thought like 30, 30 days is about how long we, we figured, yeah, we, yeah. We, before we realized that we really needed it. I mean, we'd been talking to Jerry for ages. It's just that we thought, you know, to, to really kind of put the skeleton together ourselves first before we bring a whole bunch of people on was the best way to do it. Yeah. But we realized that uh, this, this is a problem that just takes a lot of my, like, mind, body and energy. Um, and, and we had to start building a great team from debt, like immediately. Um, so we did the fundraising, yeah, um, in that, that Series A in 2019, before you knew it with DoorDash, we were bringing on it as a customer. Um, and like, as soon as that ARR starts flowing, again, next level of wave of competency uh, needs to be built around, um, you know, customer success building out. Uh, you need uh, great, uh, supporting infrastructure and, and like for operating the actual services. Uh, and, you know, Do I mean, DoorDash is a large operation, right? And they were putting their trust in a, in a Series A company. So we brought on a much bigger team and raised capital from, um, uh, you know, uh, Greylock again, but then uh, General Atlantic and Lux Capital. And that was a Series B in um, early 2020, just after actually lockdown and all of We'd actually kind of been toying with the idea of doing it for a little while, and then COVID hit, and we're like, "Oh boy, we better uh, we we better just get our balance sheet in order so we can start building this company robustly and not have to worry about what happens to the world." Because um, interesting is the market. Because so you got in twice just before. Yes. If things got really weird, yeah. the market kind of froze for a little bit, but then it exploded again. I know, I know. Yeah. We always regretted having uh, having pulled it in February 2020. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or I think it was more of like March, uh, but yeah. Uh, Interesting. Um, and then, when did you sign DoorDash as a customer? So that was that was Pretty before early. Series B, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, so at what point did you realize, Rob, that you had product market fit and you could begin to scale 
go to market? Yeah, so we, we real. I feel like around that Series B was when we uh, really realized, hey, this was a perfect fit for, um, for, and we have like Robinhood, Snapchat, uh, you know, a bunch of other tech forward companies. Um, and uh, we realized that we needed to start to build an enterprise muscle as well. Um, and that's when, yeah, we, we knew that we would, uh, we would need to continue to, to build out this, this properly. And then around that, and then Series C was when that was really, you know, um, quite, quite well in flight. Uh, and we bought on Google Ventures as, uh, as a lead for that. So round. where are you, how much have you raised to date? More than $300 million. Yeah. 300 million? Yes. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. And uh, I don't know, maybe someday you'll be ringing the bell up there. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's what we, yeah. I, I, we always talk about the, the bell, you know, and uh, <laughs> thinking about how, yeah, how we get there. It would be fun to do that with the team. And especially when you build a team that, that really is, is so switched on and world-class, it's really important to think back to, you know, what, yeah, well, what we're all here for and like the, the success you want to achieve. And yeah. Well, I hope we can cover you when you're up there on the balcony. Well, Rob, thanks to. so much for coming yeah. with you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for chatting with me. Yeah, you bet. All right, keep it right there with our next guest right up. This is Dave Vellante for our Media Week, The Cube, plus NYSE Wired. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm -hmm.